morning. This is Senate Judiciary, second edition. Um, and we're taking up S-184, a bill having to do with justifiable homicide. We have a strike all redraft by Eric Fitzpatrick. Um, it's draft 1.1. Eric, do you want to walk through the changes, please? Yeah, sure. We'll do. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, Eric Fitzpatrick with the Office of Legislative Counsel here to uh, walk the committee through the redrafted committee strike all version of uh, S-184, it's an act relating to uh, self-defense and defense of others. Senator Zuz, you want me to pull up the language real quick or? I think he might have frozen there. Um, it's easy to read and I don't think we need to pull it up. Okay, great. So the two, you'll see there's two changes and the, the bill uh, essentially deals with, as I'm sure the members all remember, that uh, it's clarifying some legislation that the uh, legislature and this committee passed last year to be clear that when you made amendments to the um, self-defense justifiable homicide statute, you did not mean to uh, uh, remove the ability of a person to raise the defense of defense of others. So in other words, not just the self-defense uh, defense, which is clearly preserved, but also to make sure that defense of others, which is a defense that was available at common law, and I don't think anybody intended to, to uh, override with the changes that you made last year, just to make clear that that's not the case. So there's not a change to that piece of the bill. That's the middle subsection of the bill, which just makes clear that uh, the defense applies when it's you're defending yourself or any other person. Uh, and then similarly, uh, this, a similar change is in this strike call amendment is proposed to be made um, to the first piece of the bill, the first defense uh, provision. I'm just pulling that up right now. And the um, the idea there as well, you see that there's there are listed uh, relations. In other words, members of a person's family and others for whom a person uh, can raise that defense. And it's expanded to include any other for any person, essentially. So um, I'm going to pull that up right now. I actually don't have it on the screen. So give me a moment. Um, because I had. Right, so you see uh, in subdivision A1 is where that change is proposed to be made that, uh, um, that the a person is guiltless of uh, killing or wounding another person. The existing statute provides in the just and necessary defense of the person's own life or the life of, and then there are specifically listed um, other persons whom the person could defend in be uh, justified in that defense. And that's existing statute. That wasn't changed. Um, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It, there were some technical changes made to that language in the bill last year, but substantively no changes other than taking out, you, you may recall, uh, I think mistress, master and mistress were in there as well. And that was struck because that's archaic terminology that you no longer use, but otherwise no substantive changes really to this provision. But the proposal here is to also provide that um, just in this necessary defense applies not only if you're defending one of those individuals, in other words, the person's spouse, parent, child, sibling, guardian, or ward, but rather it would apply for the just and necessary defense of any other person. So that's the proposal for that first piece. And the second change you'll see at the very end of the amendment, um, that actually comes directly out of the existing aggravated assault statute. Similar language is there, and that's to you know, really clarify the same point that I mentioned earlier, which is that the intent here with any change that you make is not to, to, you know, limit or infringe or overrule or and otherwise negate any, any defenses that a person would have at common law, because it's conceivable that changes that the legislature makes could be interpreted that way. It could be interpreted to mean that, oh, these other common law defenses are no longer available. And that's exactly the concern for, you know, you, you were trying to address with the middle part of the bill to make sure that you're not inadvertently overruling the common law defense of defense of others. So this just makes that point clear and it's nope. done elsewhere in the statutes as well. So it's, it's uh, I think, familiar to the courts. 
one question, Eric, and the bill was introduced. There was um, section one had 2305 justifiable homicide, the one, two, and then a three, which was in the case of law enforcement officer. That's been taken out of this draft. Is there a reason for that? No, I think the three is still in there. Do you mean the law enforcement officer, the bottom of page one, lines 19, 20, 21? Yeah, it's not in the draft 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah, it is. It is. Not the one I just printed out. Maybe the printer, maybe your printer cut it off. Um, it's in mine. Oh. It's in what I'm looking at. It's in what I'm looking at. Well, let me look at the, my copy that I just pulled up off the web page. It's all entirely possible that my printer is as unstable as I as my <clears throat> computer is. No, my copy from the web page does not have three in it. Oh, sure yes, I... it does. Wait a minute, it does. It does. I, for some reason, it didn't print. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I apologize. You no, used... I'm glad you, glad you made sure. Yeah, no, it does. Okay. Scratch that question. Reread it wrong. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for her? Actually, Senator Benning. This is actually for Eric and for Senator Baruth. I realize this is current language, but line 16, page one, the words in the forceful <laughs> or violent suppression. Exactly who is that referencing? Are we using the deadly force against a forceful or violent burglary? I, I don't see that as a clean stretch of language and I'm, I'm struggling to figure out whether we should take the time to correct this. It's not oh. the way I read it. Okay, how do you read it? I read it and I think that the, that the that language was changed in act in uh, the the bill last year, uh, and I say changed. I think technically the placement of the of the language was changed. I don't think the intent was to change the meaning, and I think the meaning was and and remains the forceful and violent suppression is by the actor, by by the person, uh, um, you know, repelling the peril. I think. Um, yeah, the yeah actually, actually, I'm I'm looking at H145 or Act 27, and forceful and violent are underlined, so they were added last year. But it was in the last. I think it was in the last. The existing law. It was struck. It was. It was in the later part of that sentence. I think. Um, so, Eric, if I can be clear in my understanding, you're looking at those words, forceful and violent and applying them to the person who is using deadly force to repel a burglary. <clears throat> You're not looking at that language as a burglary that is being committed in a forceful or violent way. Uh, that's the way I'm reading it. There may be other readings. I'd be interested to hear how other folks are, but I think, I think that's the way I'm reading it. I mean, if, uh, if you... If you take out forceful and violent, I'm not suggesting that we do, but just as a thought experiment, if you just say in the suppression of, it's pretty clear. So it's it's describing how you would suppress somebody who's threatening someone else in, uh, imminently. That's how I read it. So right. although in, in the case of Arbery, um, forgotten his first name in Georgia. The allegations from the defendant were that he was committing a burglary. But a clear reading of the 
video was that he was not doing, even if it was a burglar, he was not doing it in a forceful or violent manner. And I'm trying to figure out We've already given the actor in this particular section authority to repel with deadly force. Why are we repeating forceful or violent? Because, uh, I, I'm just trying to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, well, um, act I, under I understand deadly force is forceful and violent. So if you're applying it to the actor, that's one thing. But was our intent to say somebody in Arbery's position um, would not entitle an actor here to repel with deadly force? Joe, in, in the original Act 27, the language that was, that was added was forceful and violent. The other stuff was also added, but in the, this particular, in the forceful or violent suppression of a person attempting to commit murder, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, burglary, or robbery. And what was struck was with force or violence. So whatever reason, we, we took the force or violence, changed it to forceful or violent suppression in front of that. So does that make sense? I'm reading, so. I, I understand, Dick, what we did. No, I don't think, no, it, no, my point is that before it had read in the current law before this, had it, re it had read sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, burglary or robbery with force or violence. Some may call robbery with force or violence. I think they wanted to make clear that it was with force or violence. And they they moved the forceful or violent suppression to the to that for front of the section. Does Mr. that Chair. make sense? I, Senator I, Ruth, yeah. Uh, I think you're getting I, caught in the weeds. I I see Joe's point that that there's it, it looks to me to be unnecessary, honestly, to say forceful and violent because um, we're already, as he said, we're already granting that they can repel with deadly force in the suppression of a person attempting to commit these things. So I, I suppose one possibility is you could strike forceful or violent. I do think um, with this you know, this particular section seems to be a kind of black hole that we can't get out of. And what I worry is that this draft is very clear, very simple. And I worry that we're gonna make another change. Then the house is gonna to wanna to revisit it next year. Um, so I don't, I, the only thing that I oppose is constant revision of justifiable homicide. So no. I could either go with striking forceful and violent or leaving it alone. But I would hope that we wouldn't pick it up again. Um, I, I understand the frustration. If everybody else is reading this as just fine, I'll step back. But I question the wisdom of why that language is in there. And well, we're lucky that, that uh, Evan Meenan representing the state's attorney He's in Matt Valero, Valerio representing the Defender General, or is the Defender General, are here and may wish to comment on the changes as well as Senator Benning's concern about forceful and violent. Who wants to go first? Evan, go ahead. I, su I suppose I'll suppose I'll be the lucky volunteer. This is Evan Meenan from the Department of State. Oh, no, you, you unmuted first. Oh, <laughs> lesson learned. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because I, I remember we had a, a, a bit of a conversation about this at the at the last um, the last hearing. And I I read the the new draft of the bill and I I was having an internal debate about myself with myself about whether to ask the exact same question that Senator Benning did. And um, the side of me that that 
that wants to not complicate this further was prevailing and I wasn't going to say anything. Um, and then, and then Senator Benning raised the issue. And, and I think it's, I think it's perhaps a good question to ask. I think there's, I, th I think one legitimate reading of the language that exists in the current, in the current bill is that, you know, there's really a two tier inquiry. The first would be whoever, whoever is repelling these offenses needs to first be justified in using force or violence to do so. Cause that's sort of one question because that could be something less than deadly force. And then the use of deadly force also needs to be justified itself. Um, but at the same time, some, some legislative language that I had sent to both Senator Benning and Eric Fitzpatrick um, um, and read burglary or robbery with force or violence. Basically, it eliminated, it eliminated the comma that, that used to appear in this statute uh, to make, make it clear that the burglary and the robbery had to be committed in a violent way. Otherwise, you can't just go up and, and use deadly force. So, you know, could some added clarification be helpful? Perhaps. Um, but I but I do think the language in the proposed bill is is pretty good, um, especially with the addition of the comment about common law. Matt. I was actually uh, I'm in favor of like not not changing this. Uh, what this tried to do was incorporate the prior understood language involving uh, defense of uh, uh, you know defense of others and the prior justifiable homicide statute, which was de derived from common law. That there's been a lot of case law and an understanding of. Now we don't get a lot of these cases, but this goes back you know literally hundreds of years. Um, you know, there's a common law, uh, you know, right to defend your own home uh, where you don't have, a, you no longer have a duty to retreat um, in your own home um, and the like. And that is kind of incorporated into this. And all of the way these have developed is on a case-by-case -case basis, but it's understood. I'm worried that if you take out some of this language that has been in there for quite a number of years, that a court might look at it and say, oh, they're trying to change something substantive. Um, and I think that what you're trying to do with this bill is actually maintain what has always been available at common law. Um, and courts look at things oddly. And I, uh, at times when language that has been around for a long time uh, changes, uh, and, you know, I, I point no further to, you know, Judge Treadwell's uh, interpretation of the midpoint review, which has been around for a really long time, but there was a, you know, minor change in the, in the criteria for which it is, but and then all of a sudden it wasn't retroactive. I, I mean, I didn't understand the opinion. I've told him that, but I, uh, you know, I just worry about what a court will do when you start changing language that has been there traditionally because they're going to infer that there's some sort of intent to change the law as opposed to um, clean it up because it was old. <clears throat> I'd, I'd leave it alone. Uh, Thank you. Senator Benning. Sure, I'm, I'm uh, hearing and I'm digesting. This is my bill. I don't want to screw it up. The um, phrase is something we actually moved. It's been language, it's been there for a hundred years, but it's a phrase that we moved. And as I read it, I come up with a question. If everybody from the state and the defense is satisfied with it, and nobody on this committee is looking at that saying, that's an awkward piece of English language, then I'm just going to end it there and we'll move on because I want the bill to pass. Okay. Well, the fact that we moved it uh, from where it had been last year in Act 40, in Act 27, 
um, you know, signifies that we, and I don't remember the reasons for moving it, but I know we did. So um, I would favor leaving as is and uh, much probably for the reasons that Matt just suggested. I, d I just would say that um, uh, as a co-sponsor of the bill, Senator Benning, um, along with Brock Chittenden, Collimore, Cummings, Ingalls, Lyons, McCormick, Nitka, Parent, Birchuk, Starr, Terenzini, Westman, and White. Oh, am I on this one? Oh. Yep. Yes, this is the, actually the only bill I've submitted with a quorum of senators attached to it. So <laughs> I'm very happy with that. And I'm not trying to extend this conversation by any stretch. It, the question has been answered, and I'm happy to move on from there. Okay. We'll leave it be. All right. So um, are there any other further questions or comments about draft 1.1? Hearing none, is there a motion to report uh, to amend the bill as, as seen in draft 1.1, 121, 12.23 p.m.? So Senator moved. White has moved that we report the bill, favor I report that we amend the bill, S-184, as seen in draft 1.1. Any further discussion from anyone? Hearing none, Peggy, would you please call the roll? Senator Benning. Aye. Senator Nicka. Aye. Yes. Senator White. Aye. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. All right. It's been uh, amended. Now the question is, shall we report S-184 as amended favorably um, to the full sure. Senate? Senator White has moved that we report S-184 favorably as amended. Any further discussion from anyone? My only comment would be that Senator Benning report it. I think so, that's I probably a, a given. Um, I thought Jeanette was jumping out there to make that effort herself. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I'm happy to report. Okay. So... Senator Benning, excuse me, Senator White, we have to vote first before we can okay. uh, decide who the report it is. Um, Peggy, could you please call the roll again? Senator Benning. Yes. Senator Nicka. Yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. So we're unanimous in that. Senator Benning, would you like to report this bill? I'd be happy to, Senator Sears. And can I ask uh, Peggy, how do I get this uh, up to Senator Bloomer? I'll, I'll send you an e I will send you an email telling you to reply all. Thank rather, you. Really, rather simple. All right. One it's, other matter. It, it's still don't send that document though. That that needs. Yeah, to, yeah. I'll wait for yeah. you to give me the clean version, Eric. Eric. Yeah. Thank you. I will. I will need a list of witnesses. Yeah. And Eric, don't worry about a summary. I can handle this one. Okay, thanks. I'll get you the witnesses. <laughs> On S-113, the PFOA bill, we um, had a third amendment. I think I sent out an email, but I hope everybody's okay with changing the date from effective date from July 1, 2021 to July 1, 2022. And that would be a, the third amendment to the bill. Yes. I not there a was a... Can I just say something about that? You know, yeah. that came up when we were doing the walkthrough. And for some reason, um, uh, Michael Gray had some comments about it, about maybe leaving it at 21. I have to admit, I had a big question mark by it. I mean, I'm fine to change it, but what, why did he question it in the beginning? I don't know. I, don't know I, I didn't realize he did. I, I missed that part. You did have some discussion about it briefly. Yeah. So, I think it. Senator Sears, do I need to do anything on that, or is that going to be like an amendment on the floor? I think Michael has it ready for the floor. Um, could you just check with him? Because right now on the calendar are two on the notice calendar are two amendments, the two we adopted at the third. 
All right, so I don't think I need to do anything because we've already sent the no. Way if we you would just send the, if you would just send a note to Michael Grady, asking him to send that amendment to the secretary. Okay. Thank you.